It's been a long time since I put out a shower build video. I can't even remember where I left off. But this is a high density foam board covered in fiberglass mat and epoxy just to add some strength to it. I'm sanding it down with 120 grit sandpaper to give the primer a good mechanical bond. I'm using Kills 2 primer and bare house paint. I did some test panels in a previous video to find a color we liked. Looking back on it, spray paint would have been an easier way to paint this panel, but house paint works too. Whatever paint you use, make sure you let it dry thoroughly before you cover it in epoxy. Since there's epoxy underneath the paint, epoxy above the paint, if you epoxy over it, that paint's never going to dry. As always, I'm using the Super Clear Epoxy. This is not a paid promotion. I have to buy all the epoxy I use, but I like Super Clear and I'm used to using it, so that's what I buy. I've probably mentioned this before, but I like to heat my epoxy up to around 90 degrees before I pour the bottles into the mixing bucket. Doing this shortens the work time a little bit, but it also lets the air bubbles come to the top a lot faster. I'm going to mix in a bronze mica powder made by eye candy, mixing in, I believe, two teaspoons per gallon of epoxy. I'm not using a stir stick anymore. I found that using a mixing stick on a drill makes my arm hurt a lot less. Since I didn't want a bunch of epoxy dripping off onto the floor, I mixed up enough for a 16th inch thick coat and I quickly spread it around with this roller and then let it self level and dry. Well, hopefully that string holds this. I've got it leaning forward a little bit to cut down on the amount of glare. We've got a lot of lights in the ceiling and with it leaning back you can see all the lights in the reflection. So this is the finished product. We went with the solid color in the background and then the little design up top just to kind of break it up. What I didn't account for was the creases, the brake lines, and the foam. I didn't think that the mica powder would sink to the bottom of the epoxy, which is what I believe has happened here. The mica powder has sunk and has accumulated in the low spots. Now we weren't looking for a perfectly uniform look. We're looking for that modely look with the mica powder, but not straight lines. The other thing that I'm not good at is picking colors. I'm not an interior designer. Don't ever hire me to pick colors to paint the inside, outside, or anything that you might have. I'm very bad at picking colors. I did do test panels, but they're small and it's hard for me to picture what those test panels look like on a larger scale. So this is not going to stay this way. We're going to redo this. It's going to cost me more epoxy and a little bit of paint. So it's not super expensive. This custom shower would cost, I don't know, 10, 15, $20,000 to have it done, have it made somewhere else. It's going to cost me a fraction of that even after buying more epoxy and redoing these panels. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go with the black test panel. This is what it'll look like. Kind of the same as right in here. It's got the black, but it's not really black. It's kind of got that bronze look to it. Just a darker bronze than what we have on here. Now the bonus to redoing this is you're not gonna see these grooves because these grooves are actually flat now. It's nice and flat, floated out really nice. We're just gonna sand it with 120 grit and Hit it again with the same mix of mica powder after we paint it black. Well, back to sanding with 120 gauge sandpaper. The nice thing is it's pretty flat and sands pretty quickly. And this time I'm using spray paint. The spray paint dries a lot faster, but I always get streaks in my spray paint. So I'm going to scuff this really good with a gray scotch bright just to hide some of those streaks. This time I'm using a plastic spreader to spread out the epoxy. I cut V grooves a quarter inch deep in the spreader so the epoxy would spread out nice and even over the entire panel. This also added a nice effect to the mica powder. I taped off some of the edges on the panel so the epoxy wouldn't immediately run off. The downside to this is you have to pull a tape at the exact right time 
when the epoxy is thicker so that when it runs off the side you have a thicker edge to your panel. We didn't want the shower to be completely dark, so I put some Kills 2 primer down and then painted a lighter color on the floor. I ran the paint up the walls over the red guard just a little bit for some overlap. Epoxying the floor was a little tricky because of the slope of the floor and not wanting to fill my drain full of epoxy, so I spread three layers as thick as I felt I could without running it. This first layer is clear, the other two layers had bronze mica powder mixed in and also going up the walls just a little bit for some overlap. There's going to eventually be some glass panels on top of these pony walls, and I wanted something solid to attach them to, so I put this piece of half inch plywood in the wall for some extra support. All that's left is to glue the panels into place and caulk all the joints to seal it all up. This was a learning experience. In short, I'll tell you this, if you're duplicating this shower build, don't use this single part glue, or caulking, or a silicone, to attach the shower panels to the wall. It will take forever for this to cure and hold. Use a two part glue that won't hurt the high density foam. After this panel, I started using an anchoring epoxy, typically used for anchoring bolts and concrete. This is a two-part anchoring epoxy I was talking about. If you make sure this angle is 90 degrees, it makes ordering glass a whole lot easier. And then make sure the top of the wall is flush with the face of the wall, and it's basically done. The last pony wall has this little cubby for shower supplies. I tried to plan out these panels so the water had the least probability of getting behind it while still looking good. What are you doing, Mike? What are you doing? Just making noise. Yeah, just making noise. I'm using a leveling app that's on my phone to make sure this panel is sloped just a little bit into the shower. So here's a somewhat finished view of our custom walk-in shower. Without the glass, we only get a little mist of water outside the walls, so we do get to use the shower while we're waiting on the glass. I tried to get a close-up of the texture in the epoxy, but it's really not easy to capture that. With the shower floor, we were looking for a sandy kind of look, so we got it pretty close. As for it being slippery, the concrete outside the shower is actually a lot slipperier than the epoxy is, but we found these comfy shower mats that match remarkably well. Now the hard part for me is to find a complementary color for the bathroom walls. If you have any ideas, put them down in the comments. I'm sure you're going to be way better at picking a color than I am. Until next time, go make something.